Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Oh, how he loves you. church family and welcome to online worship. Just a few announcements for us this morning. A reminder that our food drop is this Tuesday, January 18th. If you've signed up to help, we want to thank you. If you would like to help, just give the office a call and let them know. Also, Dave Weikinger and our chow team needs an additional chow driver. If you're able to help out on Wednesdays uh, to drive and deliver meals, Today would have been our noisy offering collection, so if you have collected coins for the noisy offering, hold those until next time we gather. We will collect that change and that money for the United Methodist Cause on Human Relations Sunday. As we collect that money, we know that those donations will go to support social justice ministries and outreach through community developers, volunteer services, and youth offender rehabilitation programs. So hang on to your change, and we will be bringing that the buckets out. We will be bringing the buckets out the next time we gather together. We center our hearts. We worship together.
We thank thee, O God, for the spiritual nature of man. We are in nature, but we live above nature. Help us to never let anybody or any condition to pull us so low as to cause us to hate. Give us strength to love our enemies and to do good to those who despitefully use us and persecute us. We thank thee for thy church founded upon thy word that challenges us to more than sing and pray, but go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depended on us and not upon thee. And finally, help us to realize that man was created to shine like stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. Help us to walk together, pray together, sing together, and live together until that day when all God's children, black, white, red, and yellow, would rejoice in our common band of humanity kingdom of our Lord and of our God, we pray. Amen. Let it be so. Let it be so. As we think about the gift we have in Jesus Christ and how Jesus showed us the way to live our lives, let's bow our hearts for a time of prayer. Holy God, sustainer and guidance of our lives, we praise you this day in our time of worship and in our time of need. We need you, Lord. We come before you in prayer, lifting to you the joys and the concerns, the hopes and dreams of our lives. May we also be open to your voice in our lives that we may see with new eyes and hear with new ears the direction you will have us to go to make this world you have given us a bright and just place for all. Bless, we pray, the gathering of your people that we may grow and flourish in your love and your grace for the purpose to which you have called us. God of grace, God of forgiveness, forgive us, we pray, for the ways we have missed the mark and sinned against you and against our neighbors. Help us to not conform to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we may be able to test and approve what your will is, your good, pleasing, and perfect will. Hear our prayers for those whose lives have touched us, those who are in pain, those who are ill, those who grieve, Lord God, we need healing among us for all those who are sick right now or who have loved ones fighting illnesses of all kinds. Those with cancer, Lord, hear our cry for healing. Those with COVID, Lord, hear our cry, our cry out to you for healing. Those recovering from accidents and surgeries, hospitalizations, Lord, comfort your people in their time of need. You, Lord, you are the great physician, so bring your healing. Cover us with your healing balm. Comfort us. Strengthen us. May we touch the lives of one another, not only through our prayers, but through our lives and actions as well. Guide us and bless us, uplift us, hold us. For we are your children called to our purpose in your world. So hear our prayers, those spoken and those hidden in our hearts. We pray it all to you in the blessed name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
2 Corinthians 12, 9. He said to me, my grace is enough for you because power is made perfect in weakness. So I'll gladly spend my time bragging about my weaknesses so that Christ's power can rest on me. In the teachings of John Wesley, the founder of our Methodist movement, the favor of God, the grace of God, comes to us in three powerful ways. First, provenient grace. Grace that shows us that God is at work in us before we know it. Provenient grace can be considered the porch of a house. It prepares us to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and to respond in faith. Second, Wesley talks about justifying grace. By grace, we are forgiven. Justifying us where we are made right through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So if provenient grace is the porch of that house, justifying grace is the doorway. At the moment of justification, we cross the threshold from unbelief and doubt into belief. And finally, we become aware of this grace called sanctifying grace, which is grace's power over our sin nature. So if provenient grace is the porch and justification, justifying grace is the door, Sanctifying grace is the grace of the interior where we are invited in, into that full relationship, and we allow it to be inside of us. Our spiritual growth as followers of Jesus is a gift from God. Now today we're going to focus on justifying grace and we began to understand this idea of justifying grace by looking at synonyms of the word justify. Uh, it's, it's a defending grace. It is a supporting grace, explaining, sub substantiating, validating, and confirming. And these words, too, can be used when finding our faith journey, that place of awareness and growth. This is a place where we have our confirmation students right now confirming a right relationship with God in Christ because God is making us new. Justification brings with it sanctifying grace as we are placed firmly on a lifelong journey of faith. Justifying grace is that grace that is from God at the moment we recognize that God loves us and saves us from the power of sin. Our scripture reading from 2 Corinthians 12 speaks to Paul's understanding of God's justifying grace. Our focus scripture is 2 Corinthians 12, 9, but I want to back up to verse 8 and read this. Where Paul writes, I pleaded with the Lord three times for it to leave me alone. Paul is talking about that thorn in his side. I myself recognize that uh, through my illnesses with Lyme disease, that thorn in my side. And Paul is pleading with God to, to take it away from him and to let it leave him alone. And what does God say to Paul? He said to me, verse 9 of 2 Corinthians 12, my grace is enough for you. My grace is sufficient. My grace is enough for you because power is made perfect in weakness. So Paul goes on and he says, so I'll gladly spend my time bragging about my weaknesses so that Christ's power can rest on me. Therefore, I'm all right with weaknesses, with insults, disasters, harassments, and stressful situations for the sake of Christ, because when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul is recognizing that God is taking control of his weaknesses and showing the power of Christ through the weakness that Paul feels, thus making him strong right where he is. Power is made perfect in our weakness. I reflect on this as a 18-year-old when I was uh, finding out that uh, our family was being moved from Tulsa, Oklahoma to Sykeston, Missouri. 
and a very dear friend of mine uh, from uh, the church I was attending, the church that I was baptized in, uh, gave me a book by uh, Charles Swindle, Three Steps Forward, Two Steps Back, all about perseverance and staying strong right where we are. And my friend Teresa gave me an index card that was inside of that book, which I'm certain that she intended for a bookmark. I have carried this index card with me since 1983. And on this card is the scripture, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10. Coming out of this understanding of pleading with God to remove whatever whatever illness, whatever spiritual illness was, is inside of me, pleading with God, I hear God saying, my grace is enough for you because power is made perfect in weakness. And this card reminds me of that. Therefore, anytime scripture says therefore, it means that I've heard something that I need to apply to my life. I need to live it out. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Being well content in life because of the grace of God, provenient to justification, being able to walk through those distresses, those worries, and those concerns. Justification is the forgiveness of all our sins. God is at work in our lives to renew, to redeem, and to reconcile, making us right in God's eyes. Our relationship with God is not jeopardized by imperfect judgment or performance or our weaknesses because we are being made new. God is not looking for a reason to punish us or disown us, to put us out of his family. God continues to extend his grace to us because of our weaknesses. He's the power within our weakness that shows our strength when we seek Christ and Christ alone, that we have grace to grow in that relationship. It is considered justifying because it flows from provenient grace to make us aware that God is present and God is willing to do something new in our lives. Justifying grace is God making things right. Scripture tells us in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Try as we might, we cannot be good enough. We need God to make things right between us, to justify us. John Wesley writes in a sermon called The Scripture Way of Salvation, justification is a synonym for pardon. It is the forgiveness of all our sins and what is necessarily implied, our acceptance by God. The price paid for our forgiveness is the blood and righteousness of Christ. To state it a little more clearly, the price of our forgiveness consists of everything that Christ has done and suffered for us until he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. The price that Jesus Christ paid for us is commonly called the meritor meritorious cause or of justification. The immediate effects of justification are the peace of God, a peace that surpasses all understanding and a rejoicing in the hope of sharing the glory of God with an indescribable and glorious joy. Justification is another word for pardon. It is the forgiveness of all our sins and our acceptance with God. We are accepted. We are redeemed. We are being made new. Yes, our acceptance with God and our accepting that God accepts us. God has accepted you. And through God's justifying grace, we are able to say yes to Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes. As in provenient grace, justifying grace is a Holy Spirit moment. I relate to justifying grace uh, when I think of John Wesley's Holy Spirit moment that moved him from an Anglican priest simply going through the motions of priesthood to being on fire for the holiness of life. 
John Wesley had rather a famous Holy Spirit moment that is referred to as his Aldersgate experience. And he writes about this in his journal, May 24th, 1738. Wesley writes, In the evening I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street, where one was reading Martin Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while I was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone, for salvation. And an assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. When we read this journal entry by itself, it seems to suggest this God moment happened very unexpectedly. And the same is true when we hear others report similar experiences. Most often, however, these special encounters with the Holy Spirit come to those who are seeking, those who have opened their hearts to receive something special from God. And maybe you have had a God moment in your own life, a moment that you feel a strange urgency to be drawn nearer to God and to surrender. My justifying moment was a Wednesday night at a worship service at Garnett Church of Christ, Tulsa, Oklahoma, when I was in high school. I felt a strange calling to go forward as the preacher spoke, and, and I desired to be baptized. Something was pulling me like a magnet toward the altar. I believe provenient grace held me through that moment, and God's justifying grace made me gravitate toward that altar when my heart was ready, and my life was forever changed as I was in the process of being made new, alive in Christ, being made a new creation. More often than not, we miss that right along with justification, the Holy Spirit brings sanctifying grace, grace for the growth along our journey, a grace we may not recognize until later, but there it is. And our baptismal vows speak to this. We're in our hymnal, the United Methodist hymnal. It says, pour out, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives. Then dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. And then the pastor says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then the pastor lays his hands on the candidate and invokes the work of the Holy Spirit and, and, and invites the people around to hold out their hands. Others present join together and lifting up this praise to God and we all say amen. And then the words are spoken, the Holy Spirit work within you. That's provenient grace. God has already been at work. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, justifying grace, where we acknowledge a need for Jesus. You may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, sanctifying grace. Faith and deeds begin to honor God as we grow. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. And the pastor closes with, now it is our joy to welcome our new brothers and sisters in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. In the middle of this, we see justifying and sanctifying grace. My justifying grace was made aware to me in that call to the altar so long ago. My sanctifying awareness came months later at the top of a mountain in Colorado at church camp. We're going to talk about sanctifying grace more next week, but there my heart was strangely warmed in the holiness of God, and I was ready 
for holiness of life. I was sharing with Stephanie and Dawn the other night at dinner about our son's experience with wrestling great Ted DiBiase. John and Kyle were WWE wrestling fans in the days of Hulk Hogan's prime, and Ted DiBiase was a WWE Hall of Fame professional wrestler who was best known as his villain role, the Million Dollar Man, fighting against Hulk Hogan. But he became a born-again Christian. And DiBiase was speaking at a local church in Cape Girardeau, giving testimony to the grace of God, salvation through the grace of God by faith. And our son was around 10 years old at the time, and DiBiase had one of those Pentecostal altar calls. And John and I looked down, and we were like, where is Kyle? We both kind of stammered, wondering. And there we saw Kyle up at the altar, giving his life to Christ because of the testimony of wrestler Ted DiBiase. Something in DiBiase's story drew Kyle toward Jesus. There comes a time in our lives when the work of God is so strong in us through God's provenient grace that we are drawn inward to a justifying grace and a desire to be made right with God. Transformation begins, change happens, and like John Wesley, we feel we do trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance is given to us that Jesus Christ has taken away our sins, yes, our sins, and we are saved from the law of sin and death. Maybe you're feeling that right now, and you have a desire to give your life in surrender to God. If so, pray the prayer of forgiveness. It simply says, Lord, I need you and only you, and I surrender my life right here and right now to you. You are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation, justifying grace and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood, sanctifying grace. Thus reminding us we are all one in Christ by the grace of God.
such grace so clear the hour I first believed through many dangerous toils and snares I have Today's benediction as we leave this space of worship. Lord God, we join in your greatness and power, your gentleness and love, your mercy and justice, your abundant grace, your forgiving ways. Enable us by your spirit to honor you in our thoughts and in our words and actions and to serve you in every aspect of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May you go now with the light of Christ in you.